light language. So light language is the language of light. It bypasses the linear cognitive language centers in the brain and comes to the body as code, just like you're a computer. If you really, really, really want to understand what that's all about, watch my video called Ascension Mechanics. So light language ultimately is code. And if you are activated for light language, the light language is yours for you to use in your field. Now that's not to say that you don't have opportunities where using your light language in service for the collective or to harmonize energies in other ways isn't also made available to you. And we're gonna unpack this a little bit. So I was activated for light language, I think it was 2017, early 2018. And it came through my hand first, and a couple of weeks later it came through my voice. And honestly, I didn't really know what to do with it. There is a lot of misunderstandings out there around light language in that regardless of where you are at in your human embodiment journey, that if you are activated for light language, you are actually bringing through source. And that is not true because if you are actually channeling the fullness and the wholeness and the potency of source itself, your body wouldn't be able to hold that. So it is only as clean and clear, like all forms of channeling, as the person that is actually offering the light language. So where I find that my light language is used most often is places, spaces, and timelines. So when people sit with me in session and they share with me about something that happened to them in their past, the entire energy packet of that event comes at me. And I feel it in my body. Sometimes I gag, sometimes I burp, but most often my light language kicks in and my hand will start doing the light language to recode that timeline package that was received. And essentially what it is doing, it is it is clearing and cleansing any distortion that that energy packet was holding within the quantum field. So, excuse me, <laughs> that wasn't intended. Um, so my light language is, is kicks in or it is used by me to clear and cleanse spaces through the quantum field. Sometimes people will tell me about somewhere they, they visited and they're just telling me about the place and the density or distortion that is lower than my vibration will come to me and I'll be like, oh, something happened in that building. And then my light language will kick in and it will clear that energy packet again from the quantum field. I use my light language for myself. I wouldn't say all the time, but more often I use it for myself with myself than I do in any other kind of way. Um, there can be certain days where for a couple of days it's really coming through me, um, where my hand is really pumping out code, where I know that I'm either, I'm either coding for the collective and connecting with the ley lines, or I'm coding my house, or I'm recoding my field to help calibrate it for another up leveling in my, my frequency. Um, it's most often, and for when I use it, it comes through my hand. Now I do speak light language, and that I don't do so often, but I sing. I sing every day for a couple of hours a day. So that is a version of light language not because of the song that you're singing, but that your soul is created from the sound and light field. It is the codes of song and light. And so even if you're not activated for light language, but you sing, and it doesn't matter whether you're a good singer, you are still bringing through some version of light language for your own expression and field to be more harmonized in its energy. So light language is for you, to be used with you. Anytime that I have used it with a client in session, which again, it's just sort of, oh, it's here and it wants to be expressed, I always make abundantly clear first 
that this energy that is going to be brought through, these codes that are going to be brought through are for the highest and best for the client. So that the codes that I'm bringing through match and harmonize with the client's field for exactly where they are at that day. This is the issue with having light language offerings via social media. A, it's only going to be as high a frequency as the person that is bringing it through because the human is the common denominator. It is the baseline frequency. So it's not actually always source. So we don't always know when you're idly scrolling on social media at what vibrational state or how much inner work that person is, in do that person is doing. Can light language be hijacked by entities? I believe that it can be. And that again is a similar sort of risk that we take any time that we engage in energy work with another. It can be the same thing that happens with Reiki or cranial sacral or whatever. There can be a malevolent force that can infiltrate itself between the practitioner and the client if the practitioner is not holding the space, the field, and the vibration properly. So that can happen. Not to scare you, it just is a thing. It's like if you go in public and you touch a door handle, can you get germs? Yeah, that can happen. So just look at it from that perspective. So light language can come in and scramble your field, and then you have to, your body has to harmonize that. The other flip side to that can also be true in that the person that is making the light language offering via social media could hold such a high vibration that even too much love, as I've discussed in some other recent videos, can still land in a way that sort of scrambles your, your field. And then your subtle body into your physical body has to harmonize all of that. So my caution is, if you are receiving light language transmissions through content creators, you really have to know the creator. You have to know where this is coming from. You have to know that they're doing their work and that they are in integrity. And you also have to sort of check with yourself and say, is my field a vibrational match for receiving the code that they're transmitting today? And if it's a no, then you scroll. You just keep going. It can be a bit of a mishmash when you are scrolling, if your algorithm is set to all things spiritual, you could scroll through four or five different people in a row that are all offering a light language transmission. And that in of itself can be a little bit scrambly to what you are receiving into your field that you have to later integrate with your body. You have to pull and cleanse and clear the field, the codes for what you actually are ready for and for where you're at in your journey at any given time. So too much love, too high a coding of light language cannot serve you and too low cannot serve you and being infiltrated by malevolence is also not serving. So it needs to really be something that you use discernment with. Know the creator. If it's something that you're interested in, then I would suggest that you reach out for a session with that person instead of taking on code just arbitrarily through social media so that the person can make sure that what you are receiving is appropriate for you and not just coming through that is more for the masses or whatever. Anyway, um, I don't personally ever sort of offer my light language. I know that it's mine and that it's coded for me to work with me as um, a transmission from all of the future values of myself that are outside of the construct matrix. It is my galactic self, my higher self. It can be source, um, but it's, it is a tool and an activation that is mine for me. And if I'm ever called to share it with someone, it is something that I always make sure is matching that person's vibration and that they're receiving the code and only the code that they are ready for. And then of course, when I'm called to do collective work, then I know that that's just a part of my mission. So I hope that this helps clear up some of the misunderstandings and perceptions around light language that will help you navigate the space um, just with a little bit more clarity and to remember that energetic hygiene is important. I'll see you next time.